Hello and welcome to week 26 of the Mayo Football Show podcast. While well, the Super League, League One and League Two titles have all been wrapped up over the last few weeks, this week Snowbury United travelled to Station Rise to take on Ballyhonest Town, needing only a point to secure the Premier League title. In the Super League, Westport United needed just one point to secure second place. Castlebar Celtic and Clamaris needed all three. At the bottom of the table, Kilchimannock United and Ballyhane both needing valuable three points in their relegation dogfight. And this is the Castle Court Hotel Premier League that we go to first this week. Ballyhonest Town will be playing Super League football next season after they confirmed their promotion in style with a 5 0 win over league leader Snugbury United. They took an early lead when Kieran Mooney finished at the back post from a Gary Higgins cross after some great work down the right wing by Jarlett Carney. They doubled their lead shortly afterwards after Cal Carney's brilliant cross from the right wing was guided home by Jamel Kezi to leave them in control at half time. Ballyhonest kept up their pressure in the second half and went 3 0 in front when Gary Higgins can be slotted home a penalty after a handball in the box. Higgins then turned provider as he set up substitute Andy Canan, who made it 4 0 after a lovely finish under Aaron Curry in the Snugburn goal. Higgins rounded off the scoring as he scored his second penalty, finding the bottom left-hand corner for a second time after Kieran Mooney had been fouled in the box. Ballyhonest were fully deserving of the win and three points moves them to within a point of Snugborough with only one game remaining. The two sides will meet again before that final round of games when they clash in the Connacht Gold Premier Cup final on the 7th of October. As congratulations, a five-star performance, a 5-0 win over title rivals uh, Snugborough United. Promotion to Super League, what does that mean for the club? Uh, it means a lot for the club. They're only a young club, they're only eight years old, eight years old and the real work starts now. I have to thank the committee over the last number of years, the start of the club and the players, past and present, for getting us this far, but the real work starts now, as I said. It's just another stepping stone. It's been a fantastic season, right from the very first, you, you've been up there in the very top of the top two. Yeah, well, as I said to you in the pre-season, we wanted to start the season well and we wanted to do well away from home. Get goals and points on the board as quick as we could. Because every team has a slump, no matter how good you are. And especially in Mule League football in the top two or three divisions. It's very, very hard to keep it going consistently from the first day to the last day. So we were conscious of that, so we wanted to get points on the board early on. And it built a bit of confidence and it just took off from there. And, and Carl, this year as well, you strengthened the squad considerably. You brought in a few new players as well. They were a big addition, weren't they? Ah, of course. Yeah, like you know, if you see the, the ones like Sam coming in, Gary Higgins, Cahal Khan, like you know, it, it is a pleasure to uh, to work with those boys. Like there is an alarming amount of football uh, in that team. And I, think, I know it took us six years, but we reached the promised land eventually. Now, but like, like as uh, Tommy said, the, the fun starts now. Because if you go up there, you want to be working twice as hard. Because there's some very big fish up there, what I to eat the smaller fish. But you have the players, and if you can hold those players together, I don't think the, the Super League will be much of a problem for those players. You see, the preparation is a, a big problem, let's see, because it's like you, know, you have to find a pitch better train and then maybe add on a few people like. But the only thing is, we, we definitely want to do our, we definitely going to do our, our best, like. And you, and you have achieved promotion today. Yeah, it's quite. But, but of course, the title is still up in the bag now as well. You're only a point behind Snowborough with the game to go. I know, like, like, like I said to you, you have to get a helicopter and you have to be between between Snowborough and Bank. I know the way we have to drop the trophy. <laughs> but it, it, it's, it's great timing you know, to go to the last day of the season and being in the hunt for the title. Look, we said at the first training session at the beginning of the season, we want to be contested the last day of the season. There'll be cup finals, semi finals, or league. Look at, we're still a point behind Snowborough at the end of the day, but look at. As I said, we'll see what happens in the next season. Ask season. You to see, like, if, if you start a season, if anybody tells you before the end, before the start of the season, you are in this position, you grab by hand. You know, like, you know, this is, I'd say especially if we had not a really a good year last year. My family brought in a few young lads and, and everything just clicked. And like I said, we are a great footballing side. And we are, uh, I'd say, in full flight, we are a joy to watch. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And... Uh, I want to jinx it up there, but you are playing in the cup final against Snowbury United yeah, in, in just a few weeks' time. Will this 5 0 win, will that, will, will, will that give you the bit of an edge over them for that final? No, no, look at Cup finals are on the day. Whoever plays well on the day, who doesn't make the less mistakes, it'll make no reference at all today. 5 0 makes no reference. It's 11 against 11. They'll be looking to add another cup to their already season. And we're just trying to get there, get a performance that we're looking for. Cup final. But of course, over the last few years, Ballyhonnes are, are no strangers to cup finals and no strangers to winning those trophies as well. Uh, yeah, but as Carol said, there's a lot of young lads there this year. 
new lads and they're locally they're all local lads so look at it'll be a good day for the club but we know we won't underestimate the snubber and we know what's facing us so yeah well today is a it's not, not just a good day it's a great day for the club so congratulations Carol congratulations Tommy and congratulations to all the players involved so they're there now I'm sure thank you want you to very much, thank you, thank you. Okay. Swinford's promotion hopes ended on Sunday morning even though they came away with all three points from Ballybeg Park with a 5-3 win over Bangor Hibs. Swinford were well in control at the break and they went in 4-0 up thanks to two goals from Dara Price and strikes from Chris Reddington and Joe Slevin. At that stage, Hibs looked out of the game, but the late arrival of Mikey Sweeney for the second half changed the flow of the game. Sweeney made an instant impact and he pulled a goal back 10 minutes into the second half. Kyle Holmes then added a second to reduce the deficit even further. Hibs had further chances to add a third, but Gavin Moore made a couple of crucial saves in the Swinford goal. Donald Connolly finally made it 4-3 as he curled home a brilliant third goal, but Swinford made sure of the points as Martin Murphy headed home with the last attack of the game. Con Rangers are now mathematically safe as they picked up their second win in a week with a 9-0 win over Ackle Rovers in Father O'Brien Park. Jason Farrell hit a hat-trick with other goals coming from Liam Durkin who got two, Lee Trainer. Ben Stowe, Noel Butler and Owen Prendergast. Glenhester Rovers ended by Glassby's survival chances as they ran out 7-0 winners in Beltra on Sunday morning. Chris Rowland and Matthew Redmond both struck twice with the other goals coming from Carl Chambers, Declan McManaman and Kevin Ward. Fahey Rovers have had a superb end of season and they've collected 13 points from 18 following a 3-0 win over Westport United B. They now look forward to their final game of the season against Ackle Rovers, which is due to be the first game on their new pitch in Fahey, which will be officially opened on Saturday next. In the Alvary Sports Super League, Ballyglass made it three wins from four and moved level on points with Strait and Foxford United, whom they beat 4-0 on Saturday evening. J.P. O'Gorman put them in front in the first half as he pounced on a mistake in the Strait and Foxford defence. He doubled their lead before half-time as his fierce shot beat the keeper at the near post. He then turned provider as his neat flick allowed Evan Connolly to make it three. O'Gorman then completed his hat-trick as he calmly finished under the keeper after he found himself in a one-on-one situation. Two late goals from Benny Lavelle ensured Bellinat Town maintained their winning run with a 3-2 win over second-placed Westport United. Westport went in ahead of the break as Mark McDonough gave them the lead with a brilliant finish from 25 yards that left Mark Duffy with no chance as it nestled in the bottom left-hand corner of the net. Balna had to wait until the 65th minute to equalise as Jamie Cawley finished off a well-worked goal that started with keeper Mark Duffy. Brandon Scahill then put Westport back in front as he held off two defenders before placing the ball into the bottom right-hand corner of the net. Ben Lavelle levelled the scores for a second time when he bundled the ball home after his first effort was well saved by Gary Cunningham in the Westport goal. Lavelle then put Balana in front for the first time as he hit the winning goal with just minutes remaining. Lavelle finished neatly at the back post after getting on the end of a cross from Dylan Edwards to seal the three points from McDuffie's side. 3-2. Castlebar Celtic moved to within three points of Westport United in second place with a 5-2 win over Manola at Celtic Park. Liam Flatley and Corey Scahill had them 3-0 in front at the break before Manola pulled the goal back early in the second half. Flatley then marked his return to the side as he completed his hat-trick with the goal of the game. Manola then made it 4-2 before Gerard Boyle continued his recent scoring by making sure of the points late on. On Sunday afternoon, Ballyhane went level on points with Kilchiman Knock United at the bottom end of the table with a 7-0 win over already relegated Eris Enthia. Imo Atoy put them in front after 10 minutes when he headed home at the back post after a long throw wasn't dealt with by the Eris defence. Paddy Burke then made it 2-0 shortly afterwards as he pounced on another error by an Eris defender. Burke then made it 3-0 as he headed home across from Atoy. Sean Kilcoyne added a fourth when he headed home a free kick from Jack Tuffy. The second half was more of the same as Ballyhane added three further goals. Benaday made it 5-0 as he finished at the second attempt after Atoy sent him clear on goal. Ballyhane then missed a penalty before Burke completed his hat-trick as he scored from the penalty spot minutes later. 
Benade then finished the scoring as he tapped the ball into an empty net after some good play down the right hand side. Oh, anytime you go down here and get three points, it's, it's, you work for it, and we had to work for it today. Uh, the scoreline, uh, 7 0, but uh, they gave us a hard game. The conditions weren't, weren't favourable to any team, really. Uh, we, did, we had a good breeze in the first half, uh, we used it, we got a, a, good, a good start on them, and I think when we got the, the goal in the, in the second half, that really killed off the game. Yeah, for sure. Um, that win now means that uh, you're going to the last game, 11 points and not catch them all, and you play them at home. It's going to be a real uh, dis uh, tight or relegation decider. Yeah, yeah. Look, I mean, that's what uh, I suppose that in the season, like if we had that, we would take it. Uh, we're, we'll be looking forward to the game. Um, it, it'll be a good game. Uh, and I suppose the best team will win, and that's it. That's, that's what happened at the end of the day. Like. You've been there the last two seasons, you've just survived in the last days, so you know how to do it. Um, Kitchmore definitely won't relish that game, I'm sure. Uh, well, I'm sure they won't, but I mean, I tell you, I won't relish it either. But <laughs> um, yeah, we've been there, look at, we've been there for the last two seasons doing the same thing, so um, we'll see what we do on the, in the next game. I don't know when it is, but we'll see how we get on. Uh, hopefully, if we, we'll, we'll do our best and we'll try and win it. All right, Joe, thanks for that. Kitchmore Knock United will play Ballyhane in a last day relegation battle after they lost 2-1 to Kilmaris on Sunday afternoon. Kilmaris took an early lead as Harvey O'Brien powered a header home from a Finian Brady corner. They then went further ahead when Brandon Walsh found Danny Broderick in space down the right wing and the informed striker scored his 20th goal of the season in all competitions when he finished expertly with the outside of his left foot. His quickfire shot cannoned in over the goal line off the bottom of the crossbar. Kilchimannock pulled a goal back through Stephen Collins almost instantly but had keeper Niall Walsh to thank for keeping the score at 2-1 at the break as he made a brilliant save from an Andy Peters shot. In Flatley's side were unable to find an equaliser in the second half as the relegation fight now goes down to the final day of the season. The win keeps Clemaris in contention for second place. Mark, congratulations. Uh, a tough win, but uh, deserved nonetheless. Yeah, it was a very tough win. All credit to Knock. I mean, they're in a relegation fight and they really put it up to us there today. It made it very difficult for us. Uh, a good game. Um, perhaps not as pretty as we would have liked it to have been, but a good battle and uh, thankfully we came out on top today. Your team has progressed well during the year. Can they have found their flow in the last few weeks and playing nice free flowing football? We have. We, we, you know, we have a very young team. We've tried to get them to play the right way. Um, we're, we've always been an attacking side. Um, we've struggled in the past probably seasons with our defence, but we've tightened that up a bit, a bit this year. Um, and, and look, that's our strength getting, getting forward and that's what we try and encourage the guys to do, to have no fear and, and play forward. And still a lot to play for as well because second is now still up for grabs. It is, um, mathematically it's still there. Uh, look, we'll keep going to the last game of the season, um, game against Celtic uh, for Westport. Uh, for ourselves, sorry, and, uh, and Westport have a tough game against Paddy Glass, so all to play for still. So. And that's it for another week from the Mayo Football Show podcast, the week that saw Ballyhonis Town promoted to the Super League for the first time in their history. The wait for Snugborough to collect the Premier League trophy goes on, and has Ballyhane done enough to escape relegation for the third year in a row? Thanks for watching, and please join us again soon.